is Joe Hadwin. I would like to share with you today a, an experience that happened to me July 20th, 2009. Um, it is an experience that will, that literally changed my life. I uh, have never been the same since then. I will try to keep it as short and brief as possible so this video isn't too long, but it's something I think that everyone needs to know about. Um, on July 20th, 2009, I died from a massive coronary and went straight to hell. Uh, uh, I freaked out. I, I, uh, I had this demon slither around me, around my shoulders, real, real reptilious looking, um, tentacle type hair, millions of teeth, got right in my face and said, I got you now. Um, I looked down, I seen demons all around me, chewing me up. Uh, I panicked, I freaked out, and I screamed out, God! Uh, and then the battle took place uh, for my soul. Uh, I was saved when I was 14 years old uh, 1978 um, I was brought up under un uh, undenominational type belief later on we uh, migrated into a Southern Baptist belief church we went I went to Summer Grove Baptist Church uh, and I was taught to believe in once saved always saved but I'm here to tell you right here right now that's not the truth and it's a false doctrine. It's a lie that's fed straight from Satan. Because the Bible says we pick up our cross daily and follow him. Um, I uh, had no doubt about my original conversion. I was on fire for the Lord. But uh, some things occurred and happened to me uh, with, within the church within church elders and uh, I got burnt and I put my eyes on man uh, put my eyes on hypocrisy that was all throughout the church and when you put your eyes on man he'll always let you down always and so I knew the scripture that said that I'd rather you be cold or hot because you're lukewarm I speak you out of my mouth and uh, I said, okay, I uh, was hot for you, now I'm fixing to be hot for Satan. And along went my path of self-destruction. Uh, a week after the age of 17, I moved out on my own, uh, middle of my high school year, uh, high school senior year, and... Uh, Got mixed up in drugs, uh, all the wrong choices, the stupid choices that a young adult makes, and uh, tried everything I could to get on and off, um, get help and get away from the drugs, but uh, it seemed that uh, Satan wanted me badly, and uh, he tried everything in his power to steal my soul and he almost succeeded um, before long my drug addictions got to the point to where they were so severe that I was not only mentally addicted I was physically addicted I was on a hardcore um, drugs of crystal meth cocaine heroin and uh, I was an IV drug user I uh, go in and out of church trying to desperately cry out for help and uh, I went to this one church uh, First Assembly of God there in Bozier City, Louisiana and uh, I poured my heart out to uh, the associate pastor there by the name of Dave Edwards and uh, explained to him how I had just shot up all my rent money my truck note money uh, all the money I had to live on and uh, couldn't stop, was killing myself from shot to shot to shot, and I needed help, I needed help bad. I, 
literally just poured my life out in front of him. And uh, I think I scared him to death. You know, they hear about drug addiction. They hear about um, <laughs> these type of things all around them. And then when it's confronted with them in their face, um, I don't think they really realize the uh, full impact of what drug addiction can do. I raised up my sleeves and showed him my arms look like pin cushions. And I said, I need help. And he said, okay, we're going to help you. But it's going to cost you. And I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, hey, that's great. You know, uh, you know I'm thinking civic, you know, civic duties, uh, community service type work. Uh, I just explained this man. I don't have, have a dime to my name. And uh, he said, it's going to cost you about $500 a month. I was going to have to pay for the drug treatment, the counseling. And I, uh, I lost it. When I poured my heart out and my soul out to this man, crying out for help, he looked at for a way to make a buck, to get another dollar. In the name of Jesus. And uh, I viciously uh, verbally attacked him got to the point where I was going to get physically assaultive. I uh, walked out of the church, cursed him out, cursed God out, and literally shook my fist at skies above and uh, cursed God and everything holy. And I said, I'm going to break every commandment there is. I'm going to be your worst sinner and uh, vowed to break every commandment and uh, proceeded to do so and did so. About age 24, I was sitting in Angola, five counts armed robbery, 15 year sentence. Um, that was 1989. Anyhow, uh, Proceeded to do my sentence, got out. Uh, due to conflicts with the law, this and that, kept going back. Ended up doing 14 years on a 15 year sentence, got out, and uh, met the wife that I am with now, my saving grace, Evelyn. And um, I got mixed up and I mixed, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I met this guy. Um, that I did time with and uh, Satan put him in my path and next thing you know everything I hated in my life and I ran from I was running to and I was back on drugs and I proceeded to destroy my life and everything I love and uh, that's what happened July 20th uh, for reasons unknown to me, I can't explain it. I ate a little over four and a half grams of high grade cocaine and uh, it blew my heart up. I know a lot of you are going to think, you know, this is some drug induced deal, but uh, whether you choose to believe it or not, that's, that's, your, that's your right and your beliefs. But I'm telling you uh, what happened to me. And what I experienced changed my life because God intervened. Uh, this battle that went back and forth was unending. My wife running to the bathroom, she saw me leaned up against the toilet. She screamed my name and uh, uh, she said when I turned my head it was just a, a small black spot about the size of a cantaloupe. No eyes, no ears, no not, no mouth, just a solid black spot, and it literally scared the hell out of her. And she took off running. She ran to unlock the door. She says to this day she don't know why she did that. In the time frame that it took her to get back, I had one foot in this world and one foot in the spiritual realm. And uh, time and space is all distorted. Uh, it, it, it seemed like that last 12 years. 
an eternity. Um, and the battle, like I said, ensued over my soul. Uh, Satan threw all kinds of horrible, evil, god-awful thoughts in my head. The worst things you can think of. The worst sins possible. And God kept putting his love out. And when we say love, it's, it's so overrated, it's so overused. God's love is a perfect love. It's like a warm blanket. It just it wraps around you. It surrounds you. It, it's perfect. And um, this went back and forth from things getting light to dark, light to dark. And then finally Satan said, uh, I'm right here right now. You can see me, feel me. Where is your God? So he tried using doubt. And I started thinking about it. And I said, you know what, God? I need you. And he's right. Where are you? And he, he appeared. All my life I wanted to see him. And he was right there in my face, holding his hand out. He said, just take my hand. And every time I would reach out to take his hand... Satan's demons would sit there and throw all these horrible thoughts in my head, everything I couldn't do, and, and it was crazy, it was insane, it didn't make sense. And finally, you know, this went back and forth, back and forth, and I, I just, I was inundated with, I was wore out. I was physically, mentally, and spiritually just beat down. And I said, you know what, God, I don't care if I live in a cardboard box, I don't care what happens to my life? I, I don't care. I'm yours. I give you my all 100%. And it was at that time that I crawled into his hand, this huge, massive hand. And I'm staring in his eyes. The bluest, serene, oh, miraculous eyes. They were just so beautiful. You just get lost in his eyes. And he's picking me up. And then uh, as he's picking me up, he goes to put me down. And I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh, well, what's going on, God? And he's flicking me out of his hand like some kind of bug. And uh, then he proceeds to chew me out. And um, let me tell you something. That's one person you do not want to scold you is God. He says, you knew me and turned your back. You mocked my Holy Spirit. You mock my name. You blaspheme me. You don't deserve a second chance. And everything he said, I, I couldn't refute. All I could do was shudder. He was right. I had no defense. None. I said, you're right, Father. You're right. He said, but I'm a gracious God. And I'm going to forgive you. And I'm going to give you a second chance, even though you don't deserve it. And uh, he said, on two conditions. I said, man, whatever, whatever, man. Whatever you want. He said, one was, you tell this, you tell this story to anyone and everyone that will listen to it. And he said, the second one is... I need you to help gather the souls. I said, I don't understand. He said, I need you to gather the souls. He said, everything you were taught as a child, everything you were taught to believe in, is fixing to happen. The time is nigh. The end of the world. And there's a great spiritual battle taking place right now. And I need you. Help me. And I said, okay, Lord. And I've, I've told this story to everyone I can talk to about it. Um, everyone looks at me like I'm nuts and I'm crazy. I've been meaning to do this video for I don't know how long. And you, as you watch this video, probably think I'm nuts and I'm crazy. But all I know is when I came to... Everything that was wrong and evil in me was gone. 
and God cut out all the addictions. God healed miraculously cures it just it was gone. And uh I've never been the same since then. I was a bastard. I was just straight up mean. I persecuted Christians. Literally. I used to take the Bible and roll dope up in it and smoke it. And laugh at you if you wouldn't smoke it with me. My favorite scripture was John 3.16 to smoke. And if God can save me, and if God can love me, He can love anybody. No man is beyond redemption. No woman. I don't care what you said, what you've done. He loves you. God is love. All He asks is you just take Him by the hand. And so that's what I ask. <laughs> Give Him a chance. Before, I had no hope. My first waking thoughts when I woke up in the morning was, how am I going to get high and why am I alive? Not anymore. I have hope now. <laughs> My wife says, I have a love affair with death. I guess I do. Death doesn't, doesn't scare me. I welcome it. In this due time, when God's ready to call me, I'm ready. But until then, I will spread His word and His love. And I pray that you take these words to heart and do some good with it.